temperatures. It has a lot of important functions. Um, it, it tracks uh, all the money that is spent from the different funding sources, 61A, 61B, 61C specifically, as well as other funds, such as uh, local funds received, the, the state aid funds. Um, it does not include federal Perkins funds. And this is very important because it ensures, first off, that the funds are being properly spent, uh, but it also captures the true cost of CTE programming. Um, as you report all of your expenditures, uh, we use that information to see what the cost of uh, a program is. So as everybody puts in all the, their expenditures for a program, we look at the total cost for all those, we add them up, and then we put them into a, uh, a process that calculates um, the, the cost per program. And then the cost per program is then used to determine uh, the amount of funding um, that programs are used. And also, of course, uh, it's required by legislation, so we have to do it. So this slide I like to put in there to kind of explain how expenditures work, especially if you're new to expenditures um, and the whole funding process. It kind of explains how the, the, the cyclical process works. It is kind of a, a yearly process that ties into the rest of CDIS reporting. Um, it all begins in the, in the spring when you do your enrollment reporting and um, in the process of your enrollment reporting, we use the, the, all the student enrollments, um, all the different program information, the program costs, uh, the rank list to determine how much funding each program generates. And um, we generate funding based on a PSN. And a PSN is the program serial number, which identifies a specific uh, program in a building. So you can see here that this particular building, building one, might have three programs and they all generate funds. Uh, building two also generates funds. And building one and building two are members of a particular fiscal agency. And all of these roll up to the fiscal agency. So the fiscal agency is um, given the money that these PSNs uh, generate at the building level. And then the fiscal agency is, um, allocates that money to be spent on those programs. And it it does this for overall funding. We also have, uh, and then the primary funding source is 61A1. We also have 61B, which is a funding source um, associated with um, early middle college uh, and college credit. And it is also generated at the PSN level but it rolls up to a 61B fiscal ISD, uh, which um, is then allocated the money, which is then used to um, return back to the programs to be spent on the programs. So the first step is the funding, and we do that through the funding reports um, in, the fall, in the spring. Um, and that's based on students and enrollments and the costs and all those things. Um, and then you actually go through the year and you spend money on these um, programs and you'll spend them on different PSNs. And the thing is, is that since the money is distributed by fiscal agency, it just, it can be spread out across that fiscal agency and it doesn't have to be spread or spent on the same programs that generated the funds. So in this case, you can see here that building one and building two are generating funds for this fiscal agency but you might be spending the money on building one and building three on, on, a, on different PSNs. So it's just important that, um, that the money generated by the fiscal agency is spent by the fiscal agency, but in terms of what programs it gets spent on isn't uh, is important. It doesn't have to be a one for one match. And this is one of the reasons why um, a lot of people wanna know whether they're they've you know at a building level whether they've spent all their money and it's hard for us to say that because it is all rolled up to the fiscal agency uh, where it is determined um, whether you've met your match. We'll talk about that in a minute. And once you've uh, you've expended all the money and then in the fall now you report and so you go and you identify all the different programs and all the expenditures that you made uh, for each program and then that rolls up to a building and then rolls up to the fiscal agency. And then we compare all the money that you spent on the programs in the fiscal agency against all the money you received 
for that fiscal agency to see if you've properly spent your money. The same thing happens again for the 61B. Uh, we look at all the money that you've uh, expended on the programs that are 61B uh, eligible programs. And we roll that up to the 61B fiscal ISD to make sure that that matches the money um, that, that the 61B will be given. The 61B process is new this year uh, for building reporters. Nothing new has changed. You will still be reporting all of your expenditures um, by program and by funding source. Uh, but we do have a, a new uh, role of a 61 B fiscal ISD representative who is going to monitor the expenditures and make sure that they are uh, being spent correctly and um, that the, the right amounts are being spent. Uh, again, if you're a billing reporter, um, just continue to do this, things the same way, uh, but just know that we are starting to keep track of the 61 B funds a little bit tighter. A couple of things that you need to be uh, aware of when it comes to reporting all your expenditures. Um, there are some expectations or some requirements. Um, the first one is that, and I kind of alluded to this, that your 61A funds that you expend uh, must match the 61A funds that you received. And again, this is total at the fiscal agency level. Your 61B funds that you receive must match your 61B expenditures. And that is total at the 61B fiscal ISD level. Um, and again, as far as the billing re reporters are, you just make sure that you uh, report your expenditures as is and uh, all the matching stuff happening at the fiscal uh, fiscal agency level or the fiscal ISD level uh, will be done by CEDIS um, in the background. Um, when you report your expenditures, um, the required expenditures, uh, you, you have to meet a certain amount. There, the state legislation says that the amount of added cost you receive for a program cannot be more than 75, or, or the amount of money you receive for a program can not exceed 75% of the added cost of a program. The added cost is the extra money it takes to run a CTE program. And so therefore, if you were to receive you know, uh, $75, then you must have totally expended $100 uh, and we've got uh, some tools in there to, to make sure that that's happening. And again, this is at the fiscal agency level. Uh, so there are some, um, uh, what they call the expenditure matches that you have to meet at the fiscal agency level. Uh, you also have to make sure that your pro program improvement um, expenses uh, are 90% of the money you received. And we have tools to look at that too. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more in a minute. It's also important that you continue to report all of your expenditures um, because this determines the cost of the program, which is then used to determine how much funding it gets. A lot of people will only report the amount of expenditures to try to just that, that get them past these match requirements and not re, uh, report all of them. And in doing that, you're kind of shortchanging yourself because that doesn't capture the true cost of a program and therefore you might not get funded um, at the level that you uh, that program should be funded at because we don't accurately understand um, how much it costs to run that program and we learn that through these expenditures okay um, just a little bit more of a kind of a demonstration about how the 61a and 61b matches go uh, when, um, uh, if you look at a, uh, a particular building, um, it has a, some programs in it and you, it might've received a thousand in 61A funding and a thousand in 61B funding. Or, I'm sorry, let me take, say that around. It may have expended a thousand of the 61A dollars, a thousand of 61B dollars and a thousand of 61C dollars. Um, and Building one and building two are in um, fiscal agency one here, and it received 3,000 in 61A funding, and it received, um, and they expended 3,000 in 61A, and therefore they would have met their match. And in terms of their uh, determining whether they've met their, their, their total expenditure requirement, um, 
the uh, since there is a 3,000 received for that uh, building, then you know if you divide that by 0.75, that means they would have to spend 4,000. And since they spent 9,000 total, then they're good. The same thing kind of happens for the 61B, except we just isolate the 61B out of the total costs and we total up the amount of money received for 61B. And then in this case, it was 4,000 and they received 4,000. So they've met their 61B match here. So hopefully that kind of explains how the, the different costs roll up to the fiscal agency or the fiscal ISD. All right. Um, as you go through and do your expenditures, uh, there's a lot of support and a lot of help and a lot of resources that are available to you. Uh, this slide kind of shows you what's available. Um, for technical help, technical help is uh, help with the see this application, trying to understand how to navigate it or you know what happens when you're you know uh, pushing buttons or if you have an error message of some sort. Um, we here at PTD at the PTD Help Desk can assist you with that. And so we can help you with technical issues if you're trying to import a file or if you're trying to uh, update something and you get an error, we can help you with that. And you can call the CDIS Help Desk. Uh, you can email us or you can call us toll free or locally. If you have policy questions like where, where do I get my expenditure information or what function and object codes are valid or how do I report certain credits? Or is this, you know, where did this funding come from? Those questions need to be directed towards OCTE. And Joan Church uh, is available to assist you with those types of questions. Um, so basically, if you need technical help, uh, call us at the help desk. If you have policy help, um, contact OCTE. If you're not sure, feel free to contact either of us and we will point you in the right direction if we can't help you outright. There's also an OCTE website um, that has a lot of uh, OCT information on it that's available at this link here. As I said, there's a lot of uh, additional um, guidance and support uh, and that can be found at the CETUS knowledge base and that is found at support.cetus.com and specifically in the data entry and expenditures area. And in here, you'll find resources that uh, let you know what allowable expenditures are and kind of define some of that. It will give you the list of all the uh, function and object codes and categories and descriptions that are um, available for this year's expenditures. And it'll also help you identify what are considered program improvement items. So let's take a real quick look at that right now. So I'm going to zip over to that. All right, so um, you should be seeing my screen now. And this we're looking at and that we're gonna be using for our demos today is the CETUS training site. Um, the CETUS training site can be found at train.cetus.com. And this is a good tool, especially if you're brand new and you want to kind of go in and, and poke around and look at things and, and want to make sure that you don't make any mistakes, you can use this site. Um, and if you need some assistance on how to use the site, you can contact the help desk. Uh, but right now we want to look at, um, again, this is the training site, which is a, a, a facsimile of the production site. And on the production site or the training site, you can scroll down to the bottom here and you can get links to the support page or the knowledge base. Um, you can also see here that you have important um, due dates and you can see here when the expenditures are due, November 3rd to your uh, CPID and number, November 10th to your to OCTE. Uh, but while we're here, we can click on expenditures and it'll take us to the knowledge base in the expenditures section. I can also get here just by typing in support.cetus.com. Um, and if I type in support.cetus.com, it'll take me to the front page and then I can just click on data entry expenditures 
or I can click on the hot link down here to expenditures. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get to where you want to go. Uh, there's a lot of information on the support page. Uh, we're only going to look at expenditures right now. So we click on the expenditures part. Make sure I got that. Um, you can see the resources that are available to you. Uh, the first item is the expenditures guide, which is basically a, a manual that would um, uh, be available. Uh, it goes along with this course and there's some more detail and some step-by-step -step stuff on how to do things. So you can go back and review that. Um, you will find this PowerPoint um, and we, there's a few changes. So we are gonna update that probably at the end of uh, today's um, training, we will update that PowerPoint. Uh, you will find a training video. Uh, in this case, will be a recording of either this one or a similar training session. Um, for those, uh, this particular training is designed primarily for um, uh, what we call building reporters. And these are the ones that are actually entering in the data at the building level. Uh, we also have fiscal agents and CPIT administrators, and they have additional tasks related to expenditures. And you, if you are a fiscal agent or a CPA, we will discuss uh, a little bit of your tasks um, towards the end of the discussion today. But if you want to go in and see specifically, there are some review guides for you uh, that you can look at there. We also have an expenditures fact, which is, uh, you know, frequently asked questions, which you can look at to see um, uh, some of the common questions and what their answers are. You also have down here at the bottom um, the expenditure guidance and list of function and object codes. And this in conjunction with this appendix uh, will tell you all of the function and object codes that are available for use this year. So let's take a quick look at that. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to uh, scroll it back to the beginning. Yeah, still get back to the beginning. Oh, there we go. So the, the first, there's a whole bunch of tabs available. The first one is just the, you know, uh, title page. Um, second one is uh, some guidance that is provided by OCTE. Let's see if I can do that. Get a little bit bigger. And it gives you some general information on here. Uh, you'll notice that it's re often referred to as the 4033 expenditure report. Uh, 4033 was the historical numeric classification of this report. Um, in our case, the 4033 actually represents the, 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 the printed output. And so we just tend to re refer to it as expenditures or expenditures collection when it re uh, specifically for CETAs. But a couple of important things to recognize here uh, that are mentioned in the uh, guidance section. Um, first off, that the report has been aligned with the MDE State Aid Office Financial Information Database, or the FID. And specifically what that means is that we are using the same functions and object codes to identify uh, and report expenditures. Um, and so that as you you know, is you know the idea being that your business um, systems uh, are keyed into the way the FID works. Hopefully, that you can take those uh, relationships that you developed with the FID in your business management systems and apply them to see this to simplify some of your tasks. Uh, the second section talks about uh, expenditure requirements. And it tells you what you need to do or, or what are the requirements for your expenditure report. And we mentioned these in, uh, a few minutes ago. First off is that um, all of the funds that you received, all the 61A1 funds that you received uh, in support of your CTE programs uh, must be spent in state approved CTE programs and those expenditures must be reported. Uh, and how those are spent, a minimum of 90% of the total section 61A1 state added cost funds must be spent in program improvement areas. And we identify the program, program improvement areas by their function and object codes. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, 
and the expenditures must meet or exceed the total expenditures requirements, which means that it has to be uh, greater than three quarters. Your total expenditures must be greater than three than 75% of the total funds that you received. General instructions on doing your expenditures. Um, number one, you have to re, you have to submit the the, the report. That's uh, what we're learning about now. Uh, the reporting year is July 1st through June 30th of a given year. Um, your expenditures should be reported only for state approved CTE programs for which enrollments were reported. So if you have a program that is taking off a year, you don't report on that. Um, your expenditures are reported by program or PSN, which is the program serial number. Your expenditures uh, um, are identified by what funding source they came out of. And the primary funding source is the 61A1, which is the state aid added cost funds, or 61B, which is the EMC and dual enrollment funds, or 61C, which is equipment grants, or any other state and local funds that you receive, you must identify what those are, um, or, or it's just that they're state and local funds. You do not want to include any Carl D. Perkins funds on this particular report. And there's some links down here for information on where you can get more information on the school accounting systems uh, and the requirements. <clears throat> The next tab over talks about how to do prorations. Let's see if I can. And this just talks about how um, you may uh, need to prorate some of your expenditures. Um, and you can either do that manually or as we'll look at in the few in a few minutes, uh, use distribution tables. But if you had um, some costs that you want to spread out over uh, several different programs. In this particular example, um, you might have um, a teacher that's salary needs to be uh, prorated or spread out over different programs. You can kind of uh, do some calculations to figure out how many hours per day and total hours per day to determine what portion of their salary should be used. So you take a look at this particular section if you're curious on how, uh, what the best practices are for prorating um, expenditures over different programs. Then the rest of all the tabs down here are the different categories of expenditures. To get this, you can see this. All right, so in this case, we're looking at salaries and it gives some information about examples of salaries that can be reported as expenditures. Uh, and then you can look at the, these uh, show the different um, function codes and their corresponding, or these are, I'm sorry, these are the examples. Uh, these are your function codes and these are your object codes. And it's kind of a, a cascading list so that you'll have, you, know, you could choose a function code and then a select from one or two different object codes. Um, most of all of these you, re, you are reportable on the, I think every single one of these that you'll see is a, a reportable expense and allowable for 61A1. There's some cases that you might see that are not, that might be just be for 61B or something. But this column is the uh, important one. This shows you what is considered to be program improvement. And it is by using this column, that we're able to determine whether you're meeting your 90% um, match for program improvement. So this is how you identify program improvements. And you can see if you look at you know each one of these tabs, uh, why is everything so small? But each one of these tabs give you an example of, in this case, employee benefits, and then gives you the available function and object codes and some other references you can look to determine whether you're looking at the right items. And so um, you can see that all of these different categories uh, are broken up into their own tabs that you can look into and find out more information about. Right. 
So this is the um, the the forty thirty three guidance, um, and this has been uh, updated. Uh, everything in here is valid for this year. Um, there has been a few additions that have been uh, put into the appendix that you can look into. And the appendix also has some examples. Uh, some people had some questions about particular types of expenditures and, and those have been updated in there. So you can look in the expenditure for some additional information. And again, if you have any questions, um, you can ask us at the help desk. And if they are technical, we will uh, answer them for you. Uh, but otherwise, if you have any questions about functions and object codes, uh, those probably should be directed over towards OCTE. Some additional references that we have in here uh, that we'll get into a little bit later is um, we encourage everyone to uh, import their expenditures. Uh, a lot of times, especially if you're using your business management systems, uh, your expenditures are uh, itemized in a lot of detail. And to try and hand enter those uh, would be an incredible time burden. So by aligning CDIS with the FID, we are hoping that you will be able to export your expenditures from your business systems, which then will be directly importable into CDIS. And um, uh, ideally, making the, the uh, time it takes to import your expenditures um, a lot less. So. All right, so uh, if there are any questions on that, uh, let me know. Otherwise, I will jump back to the presentation. As I said, that uh, there's a lot of uh, guidance in the, on the support page, and I encourage you for all your CS needs to look to the support page, because there's a lot of information in there. You can do searches on it, uh, and uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of what you need, you'll find there. Okay, so let's actually start looking into how do we do our expenditure re report and reporting. First thing you need to do is be able to log in to see this. And this year uh, is a little different. Um, we are using the My Login system to log in to see this. Uh, this time last year, they hadn't converted completely. So if you're only an expenditure reporter, um, the last time you logged in might have been using MIS, the, the MIS system. We're no longer using that. If you're a CDIS user that does the additional functions of enrollments and follow-up and the like, then you've probably already uh, established your My Login account. But if you're just a uh, an expenditure reporter, this might be new to you. So um, you need to take advantage of the My Login system to log in. Uh, to do that, you need to go to mylogintp.michigan.gov. Mylogintp is Mich my login third party. And that is what we are assuming that most of us are considered to be in terms of Michigan logins. Um, but you can, you know, you, you need to go there and then follow the instructions on, on how to get a, a my login account. Um, if you're new to the system, you can go back to, let me go back to here. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. And if I go to data entry and you go to my login for CDIS, it will give you instructions on how to set up your my login account, how to um, uh, request that, you know, if you do have a, an old MIS account that is tied into CDIS by linking it, uh, and also, if you're a brand new user and never used um, CDIS or any state system in the past, then you'll just go straight with my login on how to get that, that set up and then how you can contact your fiscal agent to make sure that you get um, tied into CDIS. So if you're new and you need to learn about my login, there is a link in, this, in, the, um, in the support site, in the knowledge base um, that you can use to get information on that. All right. Um, so you want to make sure you get a my login account. You'll need to contact your fiscal agency authorized official, your level five, or we call them the FA, to make sure that you are authorized to use um, 
you know, we need to correct that. That should be your my login account. Um, it needs to be authorized. So you know you have to get a my login account and you have to talk to your your FA level five to make sure that your my login account is in CETAS. Then you of course go to my login third party, uh, log in there and that'll transfer you into CETAS. If you wanna go and just practice, you can go to train.cetas and you can log in. If, you've, if you're an existing user, you can log in with your my login account and it will give you um, a copy of what your data looks like. Uh, however, if you're brand new to CETAS, um, you will not have that in the system and you you can uh, contact us and we'll give you one of our training accounts which you can kind of go in and play around with. Uh, but to get in, you enter your my login username and password and it'll get you in there. Um, the other thing you need to make sure if you're new to the system that once you get your my login set up that you contact your your level five official and ensure that they give them that they give you the data entry expenditures model and that will allow you to do expenditures all right so once you get logged in uh there's basically a four-step process for doing your expenditure reporting first step is you need to make sure you collect all the expenditure information from the appropriate personnel. And that's kind of a, that, that step happens outside of CETUS. You uh, make sure that you have, you've either find it in your business system or talk to your business managers or what have you. But once you have all your information, then you can enter the expenditure records into CETUS and you can either enter them in manually uh, one at a time. Uh, and if you need to do distributions, you can use distribution tables. And we will talk a little bit about that. You don't have to use distribution tables. They're just a tool there to help you manage when you have expenditures that need to apply to more than one program. Uh, and you can import your um, expenditures. And we'll talk a little bit about that and some of the requirements and limitations of doing your imports. Once you get that done, uh, and you get all of your expenditures in, you need to run your expenditures validation where we go in and double check to make sure everything is in good order, your expenditures are all correct and they apply to the things and then set up and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then when you're done, you will submit your final expenditure report. So let's take that. Step one, um, making sure you find all the information that you need. Uh, so what do you want to report? Uh, you mentioned before, expenditures should be reported only for state approved CTE programs for which en enrollments were reported. How do you know whether they are approved? Uh, well, if you enrolled students in courses in the, in the previous year, um, they are approved uh, and they will be reported on the spring enrollment report. And when you try and um, when you pull up uh, see this, you'll see that they are options and your expenditures grid. We'll show that in a minute. Uh, the expenditures again are to be reported for individual programs uh, you re, um, within your building. And a program is basically uh, a SIP code in a building in a program type. And the program type is whether it's a regular course or an EMC course. And where do you get this information from? Uh, you can typically get it from your business or financial office offices. Uh, a lot of people only do this once a year and, and we've had uh, suggestions of best practices in the past that, that you create a list of all the people that you need to contact and keep it handy so that you can refer back to it every year so that you don't have to uh, relearn everything every year. So take notes on how you do it. Uh, get names and phone numbers of where you get your information, put them out on a sheet of paper or in a folder on your computer or somewhere so that you can find it every year. Um, and again, this has been a best practice that has been incur uh, suggested by um, different districts for many years. So that's why we mention it here. When you do get your information, um, you do want to make sure you identify the following pieces of that information. 
Number one, you need to know the amount of the expenditure you're going to report. You need to know the, the PSN for each expenditure or what program that that expenditure was spent on. Uh, and again, a PSN is basically a, a program or a, a, uh, within a SIP code in a building and whether it's EMC or regular. You need to know the function and object code of the expenditure or the type of expenditure. Uh, and you will have a, you know, a drop down list that you can use, but you also have the spreadsheet that we looked at it a minute ago that um, shows you what all your function and object codes are. Um, you need to know uh, the percentage of expenditures to be applied to each PSN. So if you're going to be prorating it or you're spreading it across different programs manually, you need to know how to split those up. You also need to know the source of the funding, whether it's uh, it came from 61A, 61B, 61C, or another, another type of source. Um, a tool that people like to use is to create a blank worksheet. And basically, this just will list all of your programs that had funding in the previous year. So you can see whether they um, had expenditures on them. And we'll see in a minute on how to do that. So let's go over right now to see this and take a look at this. All right, can you see that okay? Let's see if I wanna do that again. All right, that seems to be looking a little bit better for me. Um, and we're gonna go back to see this. And again, we are at the login page. Um, and typically if you were on production, this would say login through my login third party and you would click on that link and it would take you to my login third party. Uh, but on the training site, I can click on login and it will ask me for my, my login name so I'm going to put in a password. And now I'm currently logged in. You can see it'll tell me that I'm logged in here. It'll give me my um, my name. And this is, you know, my training name is Test Cetus. And I'll have in the top menu, I'll have a, a couple of menu options. I'll have data entry. And this particular user has been granted the enrollment um, functions, the follow-up functions, and the expenditures functions. Uh, so depending on what you as an end user um, are been assigned, you will have one of these three different functions. If you're just doing expenditures, you will just see expenditures here. So I will go, I will start off with expenditures entry. And I get to the expenditure entry form. And if I am representing more than one district, I will have to select the district that I want to work on. Uh, you have to work on them independently. Some people uh, do expenditures for more than one district. Some do it for just one building. If you only have one building in one district, you will only have one choice here. And it uh, should pre-populate for you. So I'm going to go there. And then once I've chosen the district, I can choose which building I want to look at. And so I'm going to go to, let's say, uh, Kingsford High School. In this case, I only have one program that would have been in there. It will tell me the PSN, uh, the, the number. It will tell me um, the, the SIP code, the name, the type, whether it's regular or EMC, the total amount of 61A funds it received, and the total enrollments it received. Um, and if I click on the little explanation sign, it will take me in to allow me to, oh, back up. Let me, let me go to a, a bigger school here. Let me go to Dixon. ISD here. So if I if I choose the, the tech center, it's got more programs here. You can see all the different programs that are in there. 
And when we talked about the worksheet, um, this little export to Excel here, if I click on that and then uh, open the file, uh, this is what comes out. And this is what can be considered your worksheet. And we, we'll list all the, uh, uh, the PSNs that you have, the PSN numbers, the SIP codes, the names, the types. You can see here, one's REG, one's EMC the amount of funds that they receive. So this, this is the number of the, the funds that you need to think about when you're matching or that are expending and the enrollments that um, are reported. So you have that at your um, disposal to try and verify and, and look to make sure and look for expenditures. Go ahead and close that. Uh, so now I have got all these lists of programs and if I wanna enter in an expenditure, I would choose the program that I'm interested in and it will uh, will allow me to enter in an expenditure. And you can see that there are some down here that I've already entered in, but let's do our own. So let's come down here and let's look at uh, the Mechatronics program. Oh, let's start, I'm gonna go back to, let's go to West Iron. Uh, let's switch over to Oakland. I'll, I'll explain to you in a minute. There's a small issue with the fact that some of these, re this, um, you'll notice that I was looking for this little dollar sign on the side. And um, in this particular training example, if I looked at, um, if I went back to Dixon Iron, and choose a, so I don't have the dollar sign, which means this building has been submitted already. So I'll explain to that in a minute. So if I go back over to my Oakland schools and select a building, I get the dollar sign, which means that this is still open. And th this gets into the steps three and four when you submit your building. And uh, we will talk about that in a minute. But if I wanted to add an expenditure to collision uh, repair, I would click on the dollar sign and it would jump me down just to the lower part of the page. And it would tell me that here, I'm going to add an expenditure for PSN 6891 collision repair technician. And then say, all right, which function code do you want to use? And then I would choose a function code and I would summon here, okay, I want to do CTE instruction. And then I would select an object code and this is a you know a cascading drop down. So depending on what I choose here, I'll get a different list here. So I have to choose something in the function code before the object code will list. And the other thing you'll notice is if I scroll down here far enough, I should see you'll see entries in um, here that have asterisks around them. And those that have asterisks are program improvement items. So salaries aren't considered program improvement, but there's some other types of instruction reporting that considered that can be considered program improvement. So that's just a, a, a little helpful tip that helps you identify what are program improvements. Uh, but let's just say I'm gonna say professional education, and then I'm gonna report that I spent out of a uh, thousand uh, 61A dollars and maybe a thousand 61B dollars and maybe you know 5,000 came from my local funds. I can put a note in here uh, to let me know something about the expenditures and then I hit enter the expenditure. And after I do that, it shows up down here in the expenditure table that I have this expenditure for this PSN and those are the dollar amounts, the total, and it puts in my note. I can go in here and edit this if I want to. Um, and it will pop that up. I have to re-put in my object code. Uh, and then I can say updated and enter the expenditure and it gets updated. Or I can go in and delete them. I can also do, um, so this is how you do a manual um, expenditure entry. Um, 
And then the next thing we're going to look at is distribution code or distribution tables. So I'm going to pop back to here real quick. Go back to here. So the first thing we looked at was expenditure records and we were entering them manually. And we looked at, see this on how to, to get in and how to enter a manual um, expenditure. Next thing we wanna look at is creating distribution tables. I think the rest of these, uh, yeah, so, oh, wait a minute, I jumped. So this is the, this is the uh, um, task list for entering expenditures manually. First you select the district, the building, the PSN, the function object code, the, the funds expended and, and the location of the funds, make a note and hit save. Uh, and then we just did this. And so that's uh, just a little bit more instruction on what we just did. The other way to enter in expenditures is to use a distribution table. And a distribution table, again, is a way to uh, have the system help you apply uh, expenditures across different programs. Um, and uh, some examples are that supposing you have a, a single teacher that's teaching multi in multiple programs and you want to apply that salary across programs. Um, you know, you may have travel times like uh, a, a teacher is traveling, you know, from school to school. Uh, and therefore that travel time needs to be broken up. Uh, you may have maintenance costs for a classroom that applies to several different programs, uh, a whole bunch of different examples. And in this case, they've showed that you'll have, um, you know, a distribution table for, for travel, that there, you know, a teacher might have three different programs in three different buildings, um, and they want to apply 25% of their uh, expenditures for travel to the first PSN, 25 to the second, and 50% to the third. And to do this, you would create an expenditure table where you would identify which are the programs that you want to um, have the expenditure spread across, and then what are the uh, rules for determining the, the ratio or the proportion. And you can see in a minute that there's a couple of different ways to do that. So let's take a quick look at that. Go back and share my screen. Okay. So we're going to come up here to our menu in our data entry, and we're going to go to distribution tables. So we're going to click on distribution table. And it'll bring up our distribution table management page. Again, the first thing you want to do is choose the school that you're interested in. Then you want to select the building. Uh, and then it'll give you, as you can see here, if, you, if I click on this grid, it'll expand to show me more. But it'll, it, it gives me the opportunity to identify all the different programs that I'm interested in that I want to spread this across. So I can click on um, the buildings or the programs that I'm interested in. And then I come down here to the bottom section. And it says, all right, to create the distribution table, first thing I do is give it a name. So I'm going to say, um, do distribution table. And I'm going to determine how it's going to be proportioned out. I can do it based on student enrollments. So if one class had 30 enrollments and another one had 30 and a, another one had 60, that's basically 20, 20, 25, 25, 50. So it would do it that way. Or, you know, obviously enrollments are probably gonna be a little bit more finer than that, but I can use the student enrollments to figure out what my proportions are. I can do it even. So in this case, I think I picked four different or five different 
programs. If I do it evenly, they're all going to get 20%. Or I can do it custom where I can go in and say, I want this one to get 12%, this one to get 13%, and this one to get 75% or something along those lines. But I'm going to choose just student enrollment and I'll hit create distribution table. And I'll take a second. And I'll come down here and I'll say, all right, we have a new, uh, this is my list of distribution tables. I can have multiple ones. But this tells me that this is my new distribution table. I can view it by clicking on view. And it'll tell me that, you know, what the name of the table is and identify the programs I've selected and what the current percentage is that it's going to receive um, for that expenditure. So then I can go back. If I don't like it, I can delete it. Um, for those who have been uh, with us for a while, there's been some questions about um, the being able to reuse function uh, distribution tables year after year. Uh, and we've found, that although we've tried that in the past, they are problematic in uh, due to the uh, variableness of programs and that the programs change or they move or they, they don't get used or what have you. And so therefore that causes uh, problems with the function, the, the distribution tables so that we're right now, we're unable to offer the ability to um, reuse a, a distribution table year after year. Uh, there has been another request that we at least be able to print out a report of how the distribution tables were created. And we are working on that and we're hoping to have that available to you uh, so that you can use it this year. All right, so you'll notice that I, I, although I created a di distribution table, I haven't really applied any expenditures to it. And um, the table is just kind of the tool that we use to break up expenditures. So I could use this distribution table to apply to uh, different expenditures um, as needed. So this is just kind of like my, my strainer or my, my tool to, to separate them out and I can use it over and over again. So this just creates the structure. I haven't actually done anything with expenditures yet. To do that, I need to come back to my expenditure entry. And I'm going to go back to Oakland. And I'm going to go back to, I think it was in the Northeast campus that we said it. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, um, you can see that the, the first entries are all PSNs, which represent that all these items in here are programs. And you can apply expenditures directly to programs. Or I can select a, a, a DT or a distribution table that allows me to use the distribution table to apply the expenditure to multiple programs based on the rules that we set up. So if I click on um, DT, it says, all right, what, ex what function and object codes do you want to use? So I'm going to, in this case, say guidance services. And I'm going to say that counseling. And I'm going to spread my counseling budget across those. And I'm going to say that this one had 2,000. And then <clears throat> I had 3,000 from my other. Let's say based on uh, a new DT or whatever my distribution table, a new distribution table. So, and then I can hit enter expenditure. And you can see down here that it um, identifies uh, that I've created this new expenditure. Um, and I can edit and delete it the same way that I did before. Now, the thing about it is this just kind of re records the intention to use this distribution table. And it doesn't actually um, split up your expenditures just yet. There's one more step that you have to do. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just for reference, I'm going to add another expenditure here for a program. And I'm going to say health services and people services and say that's just a thousand expenditure. So you can see I've got one that's based on a PSN and one that's based on a distribution table. So now I can go back to my data entry and I'm going to go to expenditure review. 
the expenditure review is part of the the, the completion process um, that we'll talk about is step three and four. But right now we want to use it to um, simulate like what we would uh, be submitting. So again, as always, we pick our district and it will list all the schools in my district. And I can actually kind of look back in time and look at previous years about what expenditures I put out in previous years. Um, but it's going to ask me to validate. And by clicking on the validate, it's going to run through all of the expenditures uh, by PSN and look at them and make sure they're correct. And then it's going to look at the distribution table and say, ah, you wanted to take $1,000 and spread it across these five tables. So I'm going to go and do that now. So this is where the expenditure actually gets created into individual little mini expenditures and put into a list um, that you can review. So we were in Northeast, so we're gonna click on validate and it's gonna think about it for a while. And that's now gonna break up all these expenditures. And so you can see that I have um, all the individual expenditures uh, that were spread out across um, the different uh, programs. And they total up here and you can see all the, the costs that have come for a different program uh, and they total up. So if I added in more and more in here, you would see them. So this, the, the validation part allows you to see the, uh, the effect of completing all of your expenditures. So. So that's kind of how a validation table, or I'm sorry, a distribution table works. So um, if there's any questions on that, we'll just keep moving on. And there'll be time for more questions at the end. Um, the last way to enter in expenditures is by importing them. And you can import expenditures um, using an import template. And this import template, as mentioned before, was designed to mimic or be similar to uh, the FID or the, the, the FID databases import tools. So if your business management system knows how to import data into the FID, you should be able to take advantage of that and import data into CETUS. So the first thing we're going to do is... Um, we go back over to our demonstration. And we're going to go back to the knowledge base and we're going to look into expenditures. And we're going to see down here that we have um, an importing expenditures guide. And the import expenditures guide um, will list how you do an expenditure. Uh, and it talks about how this, the import tool was, was designed to be similar to that of the uh, FID import tool. And you can see that here at this link here. But basically it has these items in it, a fund code, function code, object code, program code, grant code, school, and the like. And this explains on how to populate those for entrance into CETUS. The fund code is always 11. For now, it may change in the future, but for now, it's always 11. You identify the function code and the object code, which is the expenditures that we've been looking at before. The program code is the SIP code. Um, and then you want to identify the grant code, in which case these are the funding sources. So it's the 61A, 61B, 61C, or other. So you actually want to type in 61A, 61A1, 61B, 61C, or the word other to identify the funding source. You identify the um, school number, and that is the five digit school number. And you can see, um, you know, you can see what your building numbers are here by looking at uh, this particular screen. It'll tell you what your building numbers are if you're not sure what your building numbers are. You can also, if you click on your name and see this, It'll come back and it'll list all of the buildings that are associated with you. Um, and so that'll help. Uh, so that's, that's where you get the building number from. And 
the other field identifies what type of a program is it, whether it's a regular or an EMC. If you don't put something in there, it's going to default to regular. Uh, and then you put in the actual amount of the expenditure. And when you do this import, the system is going to look and it's going to look at the first thing it's going to do is look at your the, the SIP code and the building number and the program type and verify that you actually have a program in that building of that SIP code of that type. And if you don't, it's going to tell you that it couldn't find it. So that's how it knows what programs to apply these to. It looks at the SIP code, the building, and the type. So then this explains just the rest of it, how to go through the expenditures and what, uh, after you uh, enter the expenditure, what this looks like. So if we go back to um, here, you can see the you have the expenditures header template. So I can click on that. And I'm actually, scroll it over so you can see it. And you can see it just lists the function code, the fun code, function code, object code, all the fields that we talked about a minute ago. And I'm gonna see if this is, uh, I'm gonna download this file. And I'm gonna open the file in actually an access. And I'm going to enable the editing. And let's just kind of create uh, a quick import. So let's say the fun code we said is always 11. Function and object code. So let's go back to here. And we're going to uh, go back to expenditures. And we're going to look at I Oakland. We're going to look at Oakland Northeast. Um, And let's just look at this one real quick. And we're going to say, uh, we're going to look at basic program instructional services. So that's 113. And we're going to say new, new equipment, which is 6410. So I'm going to come back over to here to here and say, what did I say, 113 an object code of 6410. Uh, and the program code is the SIP code. And so collision repair uh, is 470603. The grant code, I'm just gonna put 61A1. School is, uh, let's see, I can get that if I go back over to expenditure review. Um, if we want to go to Northeast, that's 8812. Call that 08812. Other is going to be reg, um, and the amount is going to be one thousand. Or let's let's make it something interesting. So let's say it, let's you know three 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 zero. And just for interesting, let's copy this, and then let's put in you know fictitious number. We'll put another one in here, and but this time we're going to put in. Um, we're going to say this is EMC. Um, so just we can see it. We're going to save this. Let's see EXP import. All right, so now we have our file. We've got one good record and two bad runs. Let's just see what happens. So 
I'm going to come over here to data entry. And I'm going to say expenditure import. And I'm going to choose the file. And I should be able to do choose that one there. And I can open it. Oh, I can't open it and have it open in two places. I'm going to close it there. And now I'm going to try and open it. And I'm going to load the records. And it's going to come back and say, um, the first one, and and you won't the, the 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 green background is an artifact of our training site, so you won't see this, um, uh, unfortunately. And you can see that these are what that looks like. Uh, but you know, this first record has a green bar underneath it, which means it's acceptable. It likes it. Everything looks good. The second record says um, that that's an invalid object code and it doesn't know what we're trying to put in there. And so that's red, which means it will not be imported. The third one, I thought that this was going to fail, but it turns out we do have an EMC program um, along with a regular program. And so this will uh, be a good import. So you'll see, depending on what your data looks like, you'll get green or red. Um, if it's going to use defaults, it'll show yellow to let you know that you didn't put in a uh, program type or a funding type, and it's going to default to something. So um, I'm going to go ahead and import the records, and it's going to tell me that uh, a couple things I need to know about importing. Um, first off, that importing expenditure data will overwrite any current records for that PSN that max the function and object code. So what that means is that, um, <clears throat> let me go ahead and close this. So for this function object code in this program, in this building of this type, so this PSN, if I have any expenditures that exist, it's gonna overwrite them. And this allows me to take the same file and re-import and use it to re-import over and over again if I need to fix things and not have it just add expenditures over and over again. Um, these will overwrite them. So if you're doing things manually and you're doing things using imports, you need to make sure that you're not stepping on each other's toes there. Um, the other part is said that records in red will be ignored. So this particular re record here in red is going to be ignored. Uh, and then once I import them, I can see them either in the expenditure entry or the review session. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and hit import. It says it was imported successfully. I'm going to go to expenditure entry and I'm going to choose Oakland schools and Northeast. And this is the one that I imported and sure enough, it's there. And uh, the, these two, I imported one for regular one for EMP EMC. And you can see that it shows identifies that in the notes that it was imported. So now that's how I'm able to import my expenditures. Uh, We've had users in the past that create uh, that their um, business systems create import files that are thousands of records, and that's fine. Um, although sometimes if they get too large, they might get too big, and it, uh, the system will have a hard time trying to load that many records at times. If you do have an issue with that, you can always try and, and you know just cut it in half and do it in two pieces or you can contact the help desk and we can help you find ways to get those imported. But um, the one thing to note there is that uh, rather large files can be imported this way, which will save you an immense amount of work from trying to do it uh, by hand. All right. So those are imports. The, um, so once you've got all that's those are the ways to get your data into the system. And once those are completed and your data is into the system, then you want to run the, the validation. And that's the step that we kind of looked at that will actually um, expand out your distribution tables. And so you want to do that. And then once you've done your validations, then you want to submit your final expenditure report. So what does that look like? Uh, yeah, so you run your validation, as you see here, you click on validate, and then you can see the distribution of all your programs broken out 
um, by uh, program and by funding source. And what that looks like on the system If we go back to here and we click on um, expenditure review, then we choose Oakland. You'll notice that even though we validated before, it comes back to validate. And this makes sure that every time you come to this page, you revalidate the system because you may have made changes in the past and you may have validated it in the past and gone back and then made changes and so that that validation isn't accurate or current so you need to make sure that you always update or when you come to this page you revalidate and it's kind of going to force you to so it's going to tell you before you can look at what your building status is you validate so i'm going to come in and i click on validate and i'm going to have all the data here and i'm going to look through it and i'm going to say oh it looks good i can uh, export this to excel if i want to be able to look at this offline oops i think i just did it twice and I uh, open that. And you can see that it will give me the list of in the title uh, and the breakdown of um, all of the expenditures. Uh, so you have that available to you. Um, and once I've chosen the validate and everything looks good, now I can complete the report. And I do that by clicking on complete. And when I do that, you'll notice that I can't validate it anymore. I can only view it. And that stops me from trying to make changes once I've submitted it. Um, just real quick, there is a question about, can you import and still use distribution tables? Uh, your imports are assumed to be PSN based. And you know, the, the expectation is that your distributions are being done within your business management system so that your import is going to be purely PSN based. Uh, that doesn't stop you from using a distribution table, but if you use a distribution table and then do an import and they are looking at the same PSN function object code combinations, then the import will overwrite what's there. So you could do an import and then do a distribution table and a distribution table won't overwrite what's there. It'll just add to it. So you can do it, but you have to be careful about what you're doing and you have to be making sure that you're doing things in the right order so that things don't get overwritten. Um, but yes, you can, but it, you have to use care. Again, that, the question was, can you import and still use distribution tables? All right. Um, so you'll notice now that I've, uh, and this is this is going back to when I was looking at the uh, a different district earlier. If I go back now to expenditure entry, and I go back to Oakland, and I go back to the Northeast campus. Um, you see that I don't have that little dollar sign here anymore, which means I cannot modify any more expenditures anymore because I've submitted my building. So it kind of stops me from making any more changes. So um, that's why that, that. And that's when I looked at the uh, Dixon Iron and looked at these buildings. These were all previously submitted. And if I were to go in here and look at their reviews, and I looked at Vixen ISD, you can see that those buildings had been submitted. And you can see that the, the building status is marked as X, which means they've been submitted. Um, the process of submitting your expenditure report goes from the building reporter, and then it goes to the fiscal agent who reviews it and will review the entire fiscal agency together. And then once they're satisfied with it, it'll go to the CPID. And then the CPID will review it. And then when the CPID looks at it, they're also they're going to look at that um, what the fiscal agency has done. But also at that point, they're going to also look at what the 61B, fisc 61B fiscal ISD has done to make sure that the 61B has is, is been rolled up and accounted for correctly. 
Uh, if you are a fiscal agent, let's see here, if I log off of my building reporter, And login is a different, this is a training user that it's actually set up as a fiscal agency reporter. They've got an admin um, menu item that has in here the ability to uh, review fiscal agency expenditures. And if they click on that and they choose their district, they will get a fiscal agency wide report that will let them know whether they've met their matches or not. And they will see the, the 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 sum total of all the reports, and they'll be able to print this off using that print button. Uh, and so this will tell them fiscal agency wide um, what things are looking like. And so, you know, this is the totals at the fiscal agency. If you're the CPID, you'll see something similar, but you'll have different fiscal agencies within your CPID to look at. Oops, I'm gonna go to here. So I can go to the CPIT expenditure review. And I can, in this case, choose my CPID, and it will then give me the information. And you can see they will also then find a list of buildings and give you their statuses that they can check out. So that is the submission um, or the completion and submission process. So as I said, we complete the report. You make sure that if uh, you run the validation and if there's any errors, um, they will be identified and you can clean those up. And then once that's done, you can hit the complete button, um, which then will notify your, your fiscal agent uh, that they need to look at it. And um, you can also export your file to keep a copy of your expenditures from year to year. Um, and that's basically how you com complete and submit your report. Um, and this uh, goes back to show how you can submit your report. Again, when you, you, you start by submitting it as a building reporter, that goes to the fiscal agent. Uh, and once they've looked at that and it looks good, aggregated up at the fiscal agency level, they submit it to the, the CPID who reviews it to make sure everything is good there, in which case then they, they um, submit it to OCT for final reporting. As I said, if you are a fiscal or an ex, um, CPIT administrator, there is additional documentation in the knowledge base that you can look at for that. If you are uh, a, a fiscal ISD uh, managing the 61B, we are just finishing up some of the tools that you'll be using, and we'll be uh, having a special uh, training documentation and training session that available, uh, hopefully, um, you know, we'll be uh, announcing that in the next day or two about when we're gonna have the 61B um, information and training available. Again, if you have any questions, uh, lots of support, take advantage of looking at the knowledge base. If you can't find it there, contact the help desk. Uh, a lot of good info, uh, help there. Uh, if if you have policy questions about, you know, what should be reported and how it should be reported and all that type of stuff, um, and you're better off you know, going directly to OCTE. Um, although, if you know, if you talk to us, we'll probably just tell you you'll need to talk to them. So I guess at that point, I will say thank you and see if anybody has any questions. If you do have a question, uh, type it in the chat um, and we'll kind of go through them as we do. If you don't, um, as soon as I close out this session, you will be uh, prompted to uh, do a survey to review uh, or to, to say what you thought about the training. Uh, please fill that out. And uh, that would be wonderful. But um, let's see, someone looks like someone's got a question here, so I'll wait a minute for it.
And yeah, if you need direct, if you, if, if you don't see the pop-up for the um, training evaluation, you can go directly to the link in the chat. All right, so as we you know look to see if anybody has any questions, otherwise that's uh, it for today. I thank you for coming and, and hopefully you have a, a very uh, wonderful and easy fall. Uh, any of the XO 107 reports? Um, uh, you should be able to. Um, I'm not sure why you wouldn't be able to. Just see here real quick. Um, is the last year in CETUS, the last year of expenditures or the, or the, the previous expenditure reports? You should be able to, um, in the review section, choose the year you want to look at, and you should be able to pull up the previous year's expenditures. The XO 107 for 2122. Uh, oh, the, the 107 for 2122, um, we've done all of the calculations on that, and that has been submitted to OCTE, and they've reviewed it, and I think it's, there is one other step through that they have to submit all of that to state aid before we can release it. So we are waiting right now to be told whether we can release it, and we are hoping that that should come out any day now that we can release the XO 107 for 2122. Um, I can tell you it's done. It's been approved. We're just waiting for official MDE approval that we can release it. Uh, and um, I haven't checked in that in a couple of days, but I would imagine that that should be pretty close to being ready to be released. Uh, as, and, I, and I will double check with OCTE at the end of the session to see where that is. But yes, we are, we're just waiting for the, the go that we can release it. Is there any other questions? None of the previous 107s. Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure why that's the case, but I will certainly look into it if that's the case. You should be able to see all of the previous 107s. Um, and if they're not, then I will make sure that we get it taken care of right away. Um, should you hold off on entering expenditures uh, until you have the 61B training? No you should enter in your 61A and 61B expenditures like you've always done in the past. Uh, the way the expenditures are entered um, will be the same. There's nothing new there. Um, the only thing that's gonna change if you are a 61B fiscal ISD with, with that role is that you're just gonna have some new tools on monitoring them and verifying that all the expenditures have been entered. So. Uh, I would encourage you to begin entering all your expenditures um, in the same way you've done it in the last couple of years. Um, you've always entered in your 61B expenditures. Um, so yes, can just continue to do that. All right, well, I will uh, definitely look into the, the 107 to see where that is. And I will also look into the, why we can't see any reports. I will look into the 107 um, in terms of being released for this year and we'll get that done. And hopefully that'll be done by the end of the day. Other than that, I think uh, we've addressed everybody's questions and we thank you for your participation. Um, and uh, we will, um, if you have any questions or concerns, please contact the help desk and we would be happy to help you. 
And we're always looking for feedback. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can send them to me directly or you can send them to the help desk and they will find their way to me. So uh, always looking for feedback and, and uh, better ways to do things. Uh, and that includes if there's particular reports that you think would be useful um, or if certain reports exist, but they, they're missing a piece of information, let us know about that too. And we can do our best to get that uh, entered in. Uh, it's been a busy year with all the changes with Perkins 5 and all the other stuff, uh, but we're starting to get caught up. And so we're able to start doing some of those special requests now. So. Well, all right. Uh, at that point, I will say thank you to everyone and um, have a great day.